let's just jump right into it then. Yeah. I'm really excited to tell this story. I, I go first, right? Do I go first? Go for it. I'm excited to tell this story. Uh, I love fan created stuff. You know, you've got Atlantic Cup, Cascadia Cup. This is the one of one of the few things in this league that doesn't feel forced and like fabricated. This is one of the things that just feels real to me. Uh, the fans drive the competition. This isn't the league being like, yo, supporters groups get together and go make a, go make a tournament or a cup and, and play for it and, and hype it up. Right. This isn't league driven. This is fan driven. And that's what creates authenticity. So I'm really excited to break this one down. So when I get into this, I'm going to go over how it started. Uh, I'm going to go over the biggest games that I found. I'm really going to focus on the 2001, the very start of the cup, uh, because I have a feeling we'll talk about a couple of other games throughout the year. Um, And then I'm also going to go into just kind of where we're at right now. Sound good? Let's get into it. So for those of you, like I mentioned, who don't know, this cup is played between FC Dallas and Chicago Fire every year during the regular season, playoffs, and U.S. Open Cup. Very simply, the team that accumulates the most points versus the other over the course of the year wins the cup. The supporters group from each team decided that there needed to be a competition between the two flame-themed sides in MLS, the Chicago Fire and then the then-named Dallas Burn. After some memorable games in 1998 to 2000, the 2001 season was the first season to officially have this cup played for, named the Brimstone Cup. The Brimstone Cup is named after or in relation to a quote from the Latin poem, Aeneid. Get me on my pronunciation, please. The quote reads, The more kindled combat rises higher, the more with fury burns the blazing fire. A very flame-themed rivalry this is, and I love it. I think it's great. Uh, The physical cup, last fun fact here, um, was actually crafted by the same company that makes the Academy Award. Pretty neat. The background's cool, but the games between these are even cooler. So in the previous episode, we talked about the 1998 double season for the Chicago Fire, and we talked about the U.S. Open Cup semifinal that saw 45 fouls and three red cards. This was one of the first games that really got the rivalry going, along with a 3-2 Dallas Burn victory in 1998, which broke Chicago Fire's run of four straight victories thanks to a literal last-second buzzer-beater goal from Zarco Rodriguez. As we know, back in 99 and 98, the clock counted down. So um, I'm going to focus more on games that happened with the cup on the line. So games that happened in 98, 99, and 2000, I'm not going to include, but there were some bangers in there. We might go back and talk about them later. But the 2001 season when this cup was created is the first one that absolutely went off. The teams met six times over the regular season and playoffs. Four of them went into extra time. We'll start with the first game where current Atlanta sporting director, Carlos Bocanegra, gave Chicago the lead in the 42nd minute. The game would remain pretty dull from this point on until the 81st minute, first minute when things would really kick off. Starting with Jamar Beasley. Yes, the brother of newly inducted member of the U.S. Soccer Hall of Fame, Demarcus Beasley. Jamar Beasley uh, scored a goal to give Chicago a 2-0 lead in the 81st minute. However, just a minute later, the late Bobby Ryan scored his second goal of the season to cut the lead to one. Then in the 90th minute of the game, everybody's favorite former U.S. Olympic team manager, Jason Christ, scored in the 90th minute to get the game into overtime. Six minutes into that period, Ariel Graziani scored off of a Bobby Ryan assist to give Dallas all three points in the first iteration of the Brimstone Cup. 13 weeks later, the fire would go again against the Dallas Burn, and they would get their revenge. Graziani would start by getting the burn on the board in the first 11 minutes. And things would be, once again, pretty dull until late in the second half, the 77th minute, current FIFA Ultimate Team icon, Christo Stoikov, stepped up for the Chicago Fire and slotted home a penalty. The game also would remain time and head to extra time for the second time in this season, where everybody's favorite, almost president of the United States Soccer Federation, Eric Winalda, would score his seventh goal of the season, assisted by Stoikov, to draw the series level at three points apiece. We move on to the third game, which is another one that went from zero to 100 really, really quickly. 
Nothing happens until about the 68th minute when Diego Gutierrez scores his first goal of the season. In the 81st minute, Piotr Novak gave Chicago a 2-0 lead, but Dallas would not lay down. Bobby Ryan and Ariel Graziani again would combine to score two goals in the 86th and the 90th minute, respectfully, respectively, excuse me, to get the game into extra time. No goals would be scored in that time, and the Brimstone Cup would be decided by the MLS Cup playoffs. Chicago and Dallas would face off in a first to six point three legged playoff series for the first time since the insane 1999 season, where an 86 minute Graziani goal would complete a three goal comeback to knock Chicago out of the playoffs in the third and final game. But that was then, and this is now. Well, this is then, but later than, than, than was then. Yeah, have fun editing that. Figure that one out. Game one was of this playoff series in 2001 was low on goals, but high on adrenaline. Carlos Bocanegra would score in the 40th minute, and the tr- teams would trade 10 total yellow cards over the next 60 minutes until the 98th minute when Richard Farrer was sent off for a serious foul and Evan Whitfield would score a crucial second goal to ensure three points in both the playoff series and the Brimstone Cup and take them back to Chicago. Game two, a little bit more reserved, seeing Chad Deering score in the 24th minute, only for Jamar Beasley to tuck away a leveler in the 84th. The game only saw five cards, much more boring. Uh, It did go to extra time, but it ended level. This kept the Burns hope alive, not only for advancement into the next round, but also for the Brimstone Cup, which meant that the final game in this series had everything to play for, and these players knew it. Dima... Kovalenko scored for the Chicago Fire in the 17th minute, followed by a 55th minute goal from everyone's favorite former and maybe future RBNY manager, Chris Armas. Then it all kicked off. Nine yellow cards in this one and a straight red to current Orlando City manager, Oscar Pereja, for a serious foul. I'm led to believe that this foul was on CJ Brown because only a few minutes later, CJ Brown was, in, was listed as injured and had to be removed from the game for current Philadelphia manager, Jim Curtin. As you can remember, we talked about the 2000 or, or the 1999-2000-2001 Chicago team of having a ton of former managers. This red card did Dallas in, and the Chicago Fire would win the game, move on in the playoffs, and most importantly, win their first ever Brimstone Cup. Now, there are tons of games in this rivalry that, like I mentioned, we will likely touch on throughout the rest of our, our series here. Um, but what I, what's important to note is that as the league continues to expand, the games become less and less meaningful, meaningful for the players. It used to be a, a series that the teams played five or six times a season because they were in the same conference, the same division. They used to play against each other all the time. Now we're lucky to even get one matchup a year. In fact, In 2023, this season, there is no game to be played between FC Dallas and the Chicago Fire. Matt Hedges was quoted as saying that this game meant a little bit less to them in 2015-2016, not because of the Brimstone Cup being less meaningful, but because other games started to mean more to Dallas, like the Houston uh, rivalry at that time. However, the spark was reignited a bit in 2016 after Dallas did their double because it was the first time Dallas had won the Brimstone Cup in five years straight. It had been Chicago, 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 Chicago. It also meant more because this is the first time that new Dallas supporters group, the Dallas Beer Guardians, had gotten their hands on the cup. This cup was a bit different, though, because over the last four years, Dallas hadn't seen it. And when they finally got their hands on the cup, they recognized something. It was dented. It was beat up. It was broken. The story goes that the Chicago Fire supporters group took it onto their capo stand where the, they lead all the chants and just straight dropped it, straight on the ground, put a giant dent in this brimstone cup and just never fixed it, just left it like that. So people look at it and they know that it, it means something. It's still a, a, a very meaningful part of this, this rivalry. Um, and this, when they, when they looked at the, the, the cup and the way it was treated by this team who had won it four times in a row that it didn't even mean anything to them because they had won it so many times. It was like, oh, whatever. That got people fired up. 
for a little bit, this rivalry came back and, and really meant something to players. However, with COVID uh, and the scheduling that has happened over the last couple of years, there's only been one game between the two in the last four years, meaning that hype once again has died down. And the, the Brimstone Cup to players does not mean as much um, as it used to. However, the fans still love it. The fans know what it means. The fans understand the importance of the cup. Uh, and they will continue to make sure that they, the teams know how much it matters to them so that they can fight. To wrap up, a little history on the cup as a whole. The leading goal scorers are Ante Razov with 11, Kenny Cooper with 8, Ariel Graziani with 8, Jason Kreiss with 7, and Josh Wolf with 6. Dallas currently leads the head-to-head matchup with 24 wins to Chicago's 22s, uh, and they have drawn six times. Chicago has scored 97 goals, while Dallas has scored 96. Chicago Fire have six Brimstone Cups since 2001, or if you go back to when the start of the league happened, it is nine. FC Dallas hold the record with 12. To say this is anything but a highly contested rivalry is silly. These guys, while they don't play a ton, still know how to get after it. Since the beginning of the year, this has been one of the most highly contested contests in the league. And it's important that we talk about it for the history of this league because of how important it was to show real authentic games being supported by supporter sections of this group. So while we might not have a ton of rivalry going into this for the future, the past rivalry of this is important to remember for years on. I love how many icons were in this story. It was just like this person, you know, everybody's favorite blank. This person, everybody's favorite blank. Just so many icons of the game involved in this brimstone cup. That's exactly what I thought, too. I'm like, oh, my God, I know all of these people. It's crazy how many ended up becoming uh, managers and stuff, too. Yeah, we need to break that down at some point, figure that out. How that happened. Yeah, I know you talked about that. Um, 